Hey folks, my name is Jason Ellison. I'm the owner and uh, senior geologist at GeoIntegra Consulting. Uh, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about CCS versus CCUS. There's uh, a, fair, a fair bit of confusion out there about what both of those items uh, mean, especially when it means uh, getting rid of CO2 in the subsurface. And so I wanted to spend some time talking to you today about that. Um, I've worked a lot of geology all across the world, and uh, I think this is a really interesting topic. So why don't we dig in? Okay, so <clears throat> when it comes to the difference between the two, th they really can be quite similar in, in some ways and, and very different in others. And so I've made this cartoon cross-section here to try to illustrate the point, um, CCUS being on the right and CCS being on the left. Um, CCS, by the way, standing for carbon capture and storage, CCUS standing for carbon capture usage or utilization and storage. And we'll see, we'll see how that plays out here uh, in these two different examples. So we have uh, some rock layers filled with water here in the subsurface. And uh, this rock feature over here, uh, the structure has oil uh, trapped within it. So we're going to see what happens in the CCUS example as uh, oil is produced from this field. So that will start with uh, a number of, of oil wells being drilled into the reservoir to deplete the, the reservoir, so-called primary drainage. And ultimately, you'll be able to produce a, the oil at a given rate and recover a certain amount of oil, depending upon what the rock qualities are, what the formation pressure is, what the viscosity of the oil is, and, and things like that. Um, ultimately, there's a number of fields, particularly since the 1970s and later, that have done what's called uh, EOR, enhanced oil recovery. And that's where you're going to drill other wells that will inject fluids into the formation, including, <coughs> including CO2, to uh, produce additional oil. So in this example on the right, um, we can see now that we've drilled infill injector wells in between the producer wells. Uh, we can inject CO2 into the subsurface, and ultimately it creates these CO2 plumes that, that increases formation pressure, and it basically squeezes the oil out of the rock uh, pores and towards the producer wells, where ultimately you will get um, higher production rates, you can get better recovery rates, and, and ultimately you make more money. That is CCUS. CCS is going to be uh, shown here on the left-hand side, and I've got a couple of different uh, scenarios. One is where you're relying on some sort of a trap, a rock trap, to, to store, your, uh, store your CO2 in. Uh, another is not necessarily relying on some sort of a, a fold or, or closure or something like that to, to create a trap. Um, and there's, there's various uh, reasons for that, which we can talk about in a, in a later uh, video. But for the sake of, of today, let's look and see what happens when we do drill some CCS wells. So you can see there's quite a few fewer wells. Um, typically, you know, the targets are going to be really good uh, porosity, really good permeability, really well connected rock. Um, and the sole purpose of these wells is to inject CO2. Um, so as, as before, you're going to inject CO2 down these boreholes. Uh, but the idea is, is you know, our, our primary goal here is not to produce more oil and gas. It's to take CO2 that's been captured at the surface and store it underground in, in really high volumes. And so whether you're inside of a trap or you're outside of a trap, the idea would be is, is that the CO2 is going to stay there uh, for millions of years, effectively. Um, it won't get released into the atmosphere because of the seal rock that you've got on top of it and uh, other mechanisms that can trap CO2 in the subsurface. So um, I've made this little chart here to kind of describe some of the different main risk elements that we're going to be looking at as we look at uh, CCS versus CCUS. And we'll look at um, geo risk first. Um, so there's all of these elements that need to come together um, if you're going to be successful with a CCUS project, including, you know, trap. Do you have some sort of a structure that's going to hold uh, this, the CO2 uh, and or oil, as the case may be, in place. The seal, what is the quality of the seal? Is it completely continuous over the over the entirety of, of the reservoir where you're injecting into? Um, what's the reservoir quality, uh, the presence and quality? Is there good? Are there good reservoirs like sandstones or limestones that are really well connected and really porous and permeable? Um, and then internal baffles and barriers. Are there going to be little um, dead ends, as it were, between some of the sandy bodies or the limey bodies that would prevent 
um, you know, CO2 from, from moving efficiently through the formation. And what you can see here is that for, for CCUS, we have a lot of wells in these fields, uh, sometimes hundreds or maybe even thousands of wells in these fields. So we have a lot of information about trap seal and reservoir presence and quality. The one thing that I have seen from the various reading that I've done is that um, even with a, a field that's had, uh, you know, hundreds of wells drilled into it at, uh, and years and years of production, you can still get surprised when you're injecting CO2 underground. So there's some risk there indicated by the yellow color. Um, when we're talking about CCS, we're drilling into um, virgin rock, virgin reservoir that we don't have as much data. Typically before, uh, particularly in the United States, the federal or state governments will let you drill uh, and inject CO2. You have to do a lot of work to prove that it's going to work. But ultimately, you, you're not drilling hundreds of wells. You probably have a couple of, of so-called pilot wells where you can acquire some data. Um, you can get 3D imagery using seismic data to give you some idea of, of what the layout is in the subsurface. But there's going to be uh, more on uh, you know more unknowns and more risk seal risk um, you know locally you may drill through a seal that looks wonderful uh, but uh, you know depending on what kind of rock it is it may be more variable along the, the structure that you want to be in drilling into um, there's also going to be a lot more uncertainty about baffles uh, and barriers um, in particular because you you don't have any long-term production data uh, uh, or, or just a lot of well data to give you indications of if those little baffles and barriers are going to to exist um, um, so we also have some some human risks here that we need to consider when we're looking at um, CCS versus CCUS. So on the left hand side, um, the key issue with uh, CCUS is that um, you have drilled uh, sometimes tens, sometimes hundreds of wells into the seal rock that's holding back uh, the, the oil and ultimately the CO2 that you want to store underground. Uh, many of those boreholes are going to be older. Um, they may have uh, metal that's not suited for, for the corrosive fluids that can be created when you mix CO2 and water. Um, and, uh, you know, there could also be problems sometimes with the cement jobs and th they may be older wells that were suitable for the lower pressures that were, were encountered, um, given that you're gradually drawing down reservoir pressure as you produce oil from these fields. Uh, but it, it, it is a sizable risk. Um, there are other considerations that you have to uh, consider that in the case of CCC, CCUS are not as bad. For example, um, if you uh, have pressures that are too high for the uh, the seals that are encasing these nice sandstones or limestones, you can exceed the frack gradient and essentially fracture the rock and that could allow CO2 to, to flood into shallower intervals. Um, you also can have uh, induced seismicity, which is basically man-made earthquakes. Um, if you uh, inject into reservoirs where faults and fractures are at a critical state, they, they can move and create, uh, create you know, seismicity. Um, some of them may be, you know, not even felt at the surface or, or anywhere else, but nevertheless, it's something that you would want to avoid. Uh, generally speaking, those aren't going to be issues in um, uh, CCUS, uh, you know, oil and gas fields, uh, because you've already drawn down the reservoir pressure and you you really, that also helps with, to decrease the likelihood of faults slipping past each other. Conversely, there, there may be in particular, you know, a risk of exceeding a frac gradient if you don't understand your pressure profile very well. Um, you know, those those reservoirs likely aren't drawn down pressure wise. Uh, you, you can have subsurface situations where that occur, but if they are normally pressured, um, you know, you're, you're going to have to be careful that as you increase pressure in the reservoirs by injecting CO2 that you don't exceed the frac gradient. Also, um, you know, those those CCS reservoirs likely do not have as many uh, as much data as, that would give you indications of where there may be faults um, and the like. And um, it is possible that you could run into a situation where an unmapped fault could could have uh, have induced seismicity, or an unmapped fault could also give you a vertical connection to shallower reservoirs, and that's not something that you want to have. Uh, lastly, and this isn't a risk necessarily; it's just you know it, the, the available infrastructure that you're going to have in the area. Um, generally speaking, with CCUS fields, there's a lot of infrastructure and know-how at the surface, whereas with CCS, it, that's not necessarily always the case. There are many of these times, particularly now, where a lot of the Midwest is, and Western United States is being looked at for CCS potential um, that don't really have infrastructure nearby. So that's all going to have to be built from scratch. So pros and cons for both. Um, one question might be, you know, if, if CCUS is so great, 
Um, why don't we just do that instead of CCS? And there's there's uh, the, the risks that I mentioned previously, um, particularly the, the leakage along old boreholes. Um, but also there are um, lower tax credits available to, in the USA to help you recoup uh, the money that you've invested in it. Um, and some have argued that the CO2 injected into the subsurface reservoirs uh, may not fully offset the CO2 that's liberated by the burning of the incremental oil or gas that's produced. And, and frankly, most CO2 that is injected into oil and gas fields are produced from other oil and gas fields that have a lot of dissolved CO2 in them. So they strip that CO2 out and bring it over to this other oil field to inject into the into the subsurface. And ultimately, it's, it's allowing other oil and gas fields not associated with the CCUS project to continue to uh, produce oil and gas. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions about CCS or CCUS, by all means, feel free to contact me at the uh, cell phone listed here or visit our website, www.geointegraconsulting.com. Thanks.